Greetings radio people, welcome back to the shack. Today I wanted to do a quick video on a radio analog PTRX 7300. This is a new fangled board that you can install inside an ICOM 7300 to provide an RF antenna output for connection to things like an external SDR. So this will allow you to have an external pan adapter on the radio. So I've got mine configured with Simon Brown's most excellent SDR console software, all hail Simon Brown. And I'd like to share with you how I have WSJTX, Logger32 and SDR console all working together to automatically switch frequency under cat control. If you like what I'm doing, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And let's just get on with it. So let's talk first about the installation of this uh, PTRX7300. This uh, web address up here that you can see is uh, one of the pages of my blog where I've included a lot of pictures of the installation process. But basically what you can see on the screen now, this slot here is where the external ATU connector was on the IC7300. You basically take that out which leaves a gap in the back panel. This board here, which is the new gubbins, this effectively slots into the slot on the back panel and is self-supporting. So this just sits where the external ATU connector used to be. This grey cable here you can see used to route to this socket on the main board of the radio. But instead you pull that out you push it into this socket on the new board and then there's a jumper that flies back to here. So you're effectively placing this electronics up here in the receive path of the rig. Um, once you're done, the rear panel of your radio, excuse the poor quality of the picture, but this is where the external ATU connector used to be. There's a push socket which takes the uh, the actual fitting that you've removed from the rig so it becomes a flying lead off the back. You can see these lugs here. These used to be the lugs that held the socket in the back panel. And then we've also got this coax feed here. So this coax feed here is the tap effectively into the RX path which then will feed an SDR. So that's pretty much it for the uh, installation. I'll include a link to the blog in the notes of the video so you can go and have a look at that if you want to. So what I've tried to do here is pull a picture together to try and explain how I've got all this configured, going on the theory that a picture paints a thousand words. So if we start over on the left over here, this is my ICOM IC7300, inside which is now fitted this PTRX7300 board. Now, I like and use microham devices, so I have a DigiKia 2 connected to my IC7300. So instead of having a USB cable from the rig to the PC, I've actually got a microham here sat on top of it, which connects to the remote. And the remote is the CIV cat control icon remote control socket. The accessory socket on the back, which gives audio in and out and PTT lines and things like that. And there's a connection to the key socket because this of course primarily is a CW keyer. So those two things are connected via that cable. And then there's also this SMA lead that I showed you earlier on in the video that is now connected to an SDR play. That SDR play is in turn connected via a USB cable to my PC which is running SDR console. Now the microham comes with a suite of software called Router um, and that effectively gives me the ability to configure virtual COM ports and cables and various other things. So what I've been able to do is set up two CAT ports, one in my case is COM15, one is COM20. So for example if I'm running something like WSJTX for FT8 or FT4 or any of these WSJT modes, WSJT suite connects to the rig via COM20 for CAT control. It also PTTs or transmit, turns on transmit on the rig using CAT control down that same virtual COM port. My logging software is running at the same time and that's receiving the frequency from the rig and the band information 
via COM15 down the same virtual, uh, it's through the same USB connection between the microham device and the PC. And then I've now, what I've also got is Logger32 is configured as a slave COM port which is going down a virtual cable which again is something that the microham router software gives me. I have a virtual COM cable with a 16 at one end and COM17 at the other. So Logger32 is set up with a slave port that connects to SDR console its cat control configuration that connects to COM17. So what effectively this now all this means is the SDR console is connected to the receive output that we just saw installed from the new gubbins inside the radio and that gives me a pan adapter. When I change band using WSJTX that automatically changes the band on the rig that automatically updates Logger32's band and frequency and that automatically updates SDR console. So sounds a bit complicated looks a bit complicated but let's see it in action. So bit of a crazy experiment here I'm going to try and record three screens at the same time. So what we've got going on here, on the right hand screen we've got WSJTX running. This is actually monitoring FT4 on 20 meters at the moment, frequency 14.080. Now, if we look at the settings of WSJTX, which I'm hoping you can see, um, you'll see that that's connected to my ICOM IC7300 COM20. COM20 is a virtual port which is given to me by the Microham router software. So that's the first connection and that's how the software is able to read the frequency and control the rig. So that's the first thing. The second thing we've got is that the uh, Logger32 software that I use here, that's also reading the frequency of the rig and that's reading it via a separate uh, virtual port which is COM15. So if I go into setup radio, radio 1 configuration, you'll see that COM15 is a separate cat port that's being used for Logger32. So far so good. The other thing to note is that the, this window over here on the right hand side, this one here, this is the um, the UDP window that uh, Logger32 provides a mechanism of talking between Logger32 and WSJTX using UDP. So what that means is that every time I log a QSO in the WSJTX suite, that automatically gets entered into my logbook over here. So the other thing to show you then on the left hand screen over here is my SDR console. Now this is this bunch of signals here is the usual FT8 chaos at uh, 14.074. This is the FT4 seven and a half second uh, transmissions which are at 14 decimal 080. You can also see other things going on in the band. Now all of the usual things can happen here. I can magnify, I can zoom, I can do all of the things I want with this spectrum. The bandwidth of the spectrum is configured by the SDR. I'm currently looking at a meg. You can look at wider bandwidths on this SDR. Configure this as if it was just a normal SDR receiver. But the one thing I wanted to show you, if I go to the um, tools and go to the options and let's have a look at controllers I think it is. So cat port selection over here is COM17 so that's the one end of a virtual cable. Uh, the other end of the virtual cable is here in uh, Logger32 and that's set up as the slave port. So I've got a slave port COM16 so COM16 to COM17 is a virtual cable. So the thing to show you then is if I were to go over here and now I were to select, well let's change mode for a start, let's go to FT8 and let's go to 50.313 you can now see that this is updated, this is updated and this is all updated just by selecting the band over here and of course it goes without saying that the rig itself has updated and retuned itself. 10 meters, ditto, exactly the same thing is happening. One thing I didn't mention 
earlier in the video that I should have done really I suppose is that the micro Kia also gives me a PS2 connector on the back of it which gives an ICOM rig interface so I've got another cat line in ICOM format between the micro Kia and my SPE amplifier so what that means is that it automatically does antenna switching and band switching of the relay and ATU configuration if I need to so for example six meters that is now connected to a different antenna to when I had it on 20 meters for example um, beautiful isn't it and it all just works